May the peace of the Lord be with you all, as we bring to you the readings of today's Holy Mass. Let us now listen to the Word of God. April 16th, 2024, Tuesday of the third week of Easter. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Stephen said to the people, the elders, and the scribes, You stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, you ever resist the Holy Spirit. Just as your fathers did, so also do you do. Which of the prophets have your fathers not persecuted? And they killed those who foretold the advent of the Just One. And you have now become the betrayers and murderers of him. You received the law by the actions of angels, and yet you have not kept it. Then, upon hearing these things, they were deeply wounded in their hearts, and they gnashed their teeth at him. But he, being filled with the Holy Spirit, and gazing intently toward heaven, saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens opened, and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. Then they, crying out with a loud voice, blocked their ears and, with one accord, rushed violently toward him. And driving him out, beyond the city, they stoned him. And witnesses placed their garments beside the feet of a youth, who was called Saul. And as they were stoning Stephen, he called out and said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then, having been brought to his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, saying, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep in the Lord. And Saul was consenting to his murder. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm The response is, Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Be unto me a God, a protector, and a house of refuge, to save me. For you are my strength and my refuge, and for your name's sake you will lead me, and nourish me. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands I commend my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, the God of truth. But I have hoped in the Lord. I will be glad and rejoice in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Make your face to shine upon your servant. Save me in your mercy. You will hide them in the secret of your face, from the disturbance of men. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. And so they said to him, Then what sign will you do, so that we may see it and believe in you? What will you work? Our fathers ate manna in the desert, just as it has been written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Therefore, Jesus said to them, Amen, Amen, I say to you, Moses did not give you bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who descends from heaven and gives life to the world. And so they said to him, Lord, give us this bread always. Then Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord Reflection What do you hunger and thirst for the most in life, and how might encountering Jesus in the Eucharist satisfy those deepest longings? So they said to Jesus, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life, whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. John 6 verses 34 to 35
Imagine if you were to never grow hungry or never thirst again. On a natural level, this would be an interesting reality. Of course, if you never had physical hunger or thirst, then you may never enjoy the delight of good food and drink. So why would anyone want to lose out on such delights? Of course, Jesus was not speaking of natural food and drink, he was speaking of supernatural hunger and thirst. And he was not saying that the spiritual food and drink he came to give us would eliminate our ability to delight in spiritual fulfillment. On the contrary, Jesus was saying that the spiritual food and drink he was to provide would result in never-ending fulfillment and satisfaction. Chapter 6 of John's Gospel will continue to be read throughout this week, the third week of Easter. This chapter presents us with what is traditionally called the Bread of Life Discourse. It's John's deep, mystical, and profound teaching on the Most Holy Eucharist. First of all, it's useful to look at this gospel within its context. Recall that on the previous day, Jesus performed the miracle of the multiplication of the loaves and fishes, and a crowd of people who had been fed by him were now seeking more food. Jesus uses their desire for more food to begin to teach them about the Most Holy Eucharist, and he wants to do the same for you. Put yourself into this scene. What is it that you hunger and thirst for the most? Perhaps you have plenty of physical food, but perhaps you don't. If you do, what else do you crave? What do you desire? When you have identified your deepest desires right now, use these desires to allow our Lord to teach you about the bread of life. It might be useful to say to our Lord, here are my current desires in life. And then, Allow yourself to hear Jesus say to you, I want to give you so much more. I am what you truly long for. If you come to me, you will have all your desires fulfilled and more. This is essentially the conversation Jesus had with this crowd throughout John chapter 6. Do you believe that the Most Holy Eucharist is capable of fulfilling you on the deepest level? Too often, we approach that sacrament in a lazy and distracted way. As a result, we often fail to truly receive our Lord on a level that provides this deepest delight and satisfaction. Reflect today and throughout this week upon your approach to Holy Communion. The Eucharist is Christ himself. It's a gift that has the potential to not only sustain us in every way, but also to draw us into the greatest heavenly delights. Believe Jesus' words in this holy chapter of John's Gospel. For if you deepen your belief in all that Jesus has said, you will begin to realize that all you crave in life will begin to be fulfilled by this precious gift in ways beyond your imagination. Let us pray. My Eucharistic Lord, you are the bread of life. You are all that I desire in life. Give me the grace of understanding, dear Lord, so that I can come to believe all that you have revealed about the Most Holy Eucharist. I do believe, my God. Help my unbelief. Jesus, I trust in you. Amen. Thank you for listening to the readings and reflection of today's Mass. Please like, subscribe, and share with your family and friends. Again, thank you, and may God bless us all.